I would love to know, Selena, what were you doing in 2013 when um, Brian was doing mission work? I was <laughs> 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 In 2013, I think in 2013, by that time I was already, I had already graduated high school. Yes. So I was also working so hard to make ends meet because of course, for me I'm from a different community which actually uh, sometimes does not value especially girls education that much. Okay. So I was really struggling to like uh, explain to my parents the need for me to transition to a higher institution mm -hmm. to get more knowledge education. and at least education and skills yeah. so i was really hustling hard then to join college mm -hmm. which uh, i ended up having to even like facilitate myself yeah. and making sure that my younger sisters and brothers are also in school um, and then in 2017 mm -hmm. i i noticed that the situation of girls education in my village was not okay because mm -hmm. My, my generation is the first generation of girls to go to school in my village. So the next generation, because the school that was built mm -hmm. was not fully funded anymore, yep. now the enrollment of girls in my village started going down. Mm -hmm. So as an alumni of that school and as a, a girl who has benefited from education, yep. I moved back to the village yep. to try and uh, save that institution and campaign for more girls to go to school. Wow. So for the last seven years, I've also been doing that work yeah. of community, mm -hmm. community empowerment, uh, community training. Wow. And then I just talk to, com to the community mm -hmm. on the importance of them giving girls equal opportunities to go to school. Mm -hmm. We do sponsorship pro programs mm -hmm. like early this year, we sponsored 77 kids to go to school because they just the drought that we've been experiencing mm -hmm. as a Maasai community mm -hmm. and even the whole of East Africa, mm -hmm. it has really had um, an impact on livelihood of the Maasai. So there's a lot of competing priorities. Yeah, sure. And now most ma most Maasai kids at that time, they were either dropping out of school mm -hmm. or were unable to join like high school mm -hmm. or continue with the education. Mm -hmm. So we always have like a database of the needy students. Mm -hmm. And then whenever there is a sponsor that wants to pay for a year mm -hmm. or one term, mm -hmm. we always link them up. So I have also been in community work a lot wow. as I try to also build on my career yeah. and skills. And during that time is when I did my cultural tourism course my mm -hmm. permaculture design course, <laughs> advocacy and policy communication. Yeah. I volunteered in organizations and it actually gave me a lot of hands-on experience when it comes to community development projects. Yeah. yeah. And what were the challenges, you know, trying to educate community, the importance of girls' education? Did you face any challenges? There were a lot of challenges because, first of all, uh, I am at crossroads. I'm advocating for education and abandonment of some of the cultural practices, for example, female genital mutilation, Ooh, which the community me. have practiced for many years. So, like, I'm there trying to now, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there advocating against some of the cultures. Mm -hmm. Of course, there will always be resistance. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is, in Kenya now, we have really good policies that yes. can back up our activism. Mm -hmm. And also, as Brian said, uh, resource mobilization, resources are always a, a challenge yeah. because, like, um, when, when you talk about now girls' education mm -hmm. or uh, abandoning harmful cultures, mm -hmm. and we have this institution that's acting as a school but also a rescue centre, yeah. and girls are flocking every day, running away from mm -hmm. unsafe situations wow. or just looking for education. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard for such an institution to run without basic things like food, yeah. sanitation, reading and writing sure, materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for me, uh, it's always not, I'm always not the best at asking for help, mm -hmm. but of course there is, help is needed yeah. and there is a need to even ensure that that school is running mm -hmm. and it's always ready to receive girls. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to resources, 
resources are limited, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. there is a lot of untapped resources back in the communities. Okay. And because of very high illiteracy rate, mm -hmm. like many people are not educated, they're not exposed, mm. they do not even have those technical skills mm. to do those jobs yeah, or yeah. To, to take advantage of the available resources. Yes. So there is a whole, there is a whole divide between like um, having the skills mm -hmm. and knowledge to run even green businesses or to mm. start new businesses. Mm -hmm up to like even children accessing basic education, health and hygiene. Wow. What's the name of your organization? Uh, so in 2017, I founded an, a community-based organization called the Nashipai Maasai Project. Nashipai, yeah. Yeah, so what we do, we also, we are like an, a grassroots organization and we, we train the community uh, on different issues, for example, sexual and reproductive health and rights, we train them on regenerative agriculture. Mm -hmm. We create awareness around uh, the, the culture. Of course, we want to preserve a beautiful Maasai culture, sure, yeah. but also abandon the harmful parts of it. For mm -hmm. example, female genital mutilation, mm -hmm. it does not serve us. It affects the health and well-being of women and girls, yeah. and it should have been stopped already, yeah. but it still happens so. So we we go happens. to radio, yeah. We go to radios, mm -hmm. we go to marketplaces, and like just have conversations around it, mm -hmm. and sensitize the community on the need to end it. We also do mentorship yeah. for girls. Mm -hmm. We have to show them that they can they 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 can dream, be and be whatever yeah. they want to be. Yeah. We we are becoming like good role models for them, wow. and we now also do this sponsorship projects, mm -hmm. we do education infrastructure in different schools in the Maasai area mm -hmm. and we also do wash projects, water, sanitation and hygiene. So if it's a, if it's a broken school, bo school borehole mm -hmm. or community mm -hmm. borehole, mm -hmm. we try and just mobilize resources to yeah. fix them yeah. because one just one issue like lack of water yeah. could make a lot of girls miss out in school yeah, sure. and of course now we are trying to see different ways where we can increase our resilience mm -hmm. and mitigation to climate change mm -hmm. because especially the pastoralist community they are being affected directly by the extreme weather conditions mm -hmm. so we are trying to see how as the masses we can get alternative sources of food mm -hmm. livelihood nutrition mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. because then the kids will not be going to school on mm. empty stomach. Mm. They will know how to grow their own food, mm. and that way now we will have like we will have more control of our own lives, sure. and we can be self-sufficient. Yeah. yeah. And who are your sponsors? So my main sponsors, our main sponsors at Nashipai are just our friends mm -hmm. who who we meet and they go back and they believe in the course we are doing and they believe that. Maasai girls should also have uh, access to opportunities mm -hmm. and education. Mm -hmm. So some of them, for example, a friend of ours called Elisa, mm -hmm. she actually took it in, in her, like, as her responsibility to educate a whole family of orphans wow. that we have. Mm -hmm. okay. and, she, mm -hmm. and so she also mobilizes resources for us. Mm -hmm. We also have colleges that we partner with. Mm -hmm. There's a college in the UK that mm -hmm. brings a group of students every year wow to like uh, early this year we set up a garden plampton college we set up a garden in in our school and it's meant to provide food for the girls mm -hmm. and nutrition security yeah uh so i um, mean and we also have we, we have organizations and individuals okay yeah so for the people who will be watching this video and they maybe they get interest or they get interest or more to, to, to understand more of your organization and also to donate and also to help mm -hmm. talk to them so we nashipai has mm -hmm. uh it's, it's it has social media mm -hmm. handles yep. uh nashipai maasai project on facebook mm -hmm. nashipai maasai project on instagram mm -hmm. and on twitter mm -hmm. I, ha I also have social media as selena mm -hmm. selena and koile mm -hmm. uh, both facebook twitter and Instagram mm -hmm. and also Bomanoma. Mm -hmm. Bomanoma has also social Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still working on, on more content on, mm -hmm. on, on my 
YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I have a YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel and Bumanoma has one too, yeah. which we are working on getting mm -hmm. consistent mm -hmm. uh, content out there. Mm -hmm. And so you can really get a hold of me yeah. in all those on in all those channels. Yeah. Because I think um, our community still has a long way to go mm -hmm. so that it can get a hold of the rest of the world yeah. and it really needs support. And I love what you're doing. Keep up. an email address maybe? An email for address for Nashipa is yeah. nashipaimasai at gmail.com At gmail.com Yeah. But I think social me social platforms mm -hmm. are way mm -hmm. better. You are available. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Link it in the, the notes. <laughs> So thank you for watching Miss Rachel YouTube channel and Karibu Sana Bomonoma. Welcome to Bomonoma, uh, www.bomonoma.com for all the information you need and reach out with any questions. Hope to see you here soon.